This is Pizza Cultura, uh, part of the Pizza Club Network. Um, today we're doing something a little different. We're just going to, uh, what we're, the working title is um, a wildcard room. So it's basically just going to be Peter and myself just chatting and having a catch up because we, we haven't done, uh, we haven't seen each other um, virtually for for a while. Um, so yeah, just going to be catching up on some of the stuff we've been up to. I've just got back from a Hong Kong trip. So I'll be talking about some of the pizza uh, that I had out there and, and stuff like that. Um, and just general catch up. Pete, Peter, what's, what's been, what's new with you, buddy? Same old, same old. I'm still working on my book and, um, getting some stuff done for s some other folks. So there should be an article that should be coming out that hopefully will have my name on it within a few weeks. And, uh, Where, where's, some where, where's that being published? Can I keep that a secret for now? It's yes, somewhere in Chicago. Course. Of course. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I mean, online or, or hard print? Online. 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 Gotcha. So you'll be able okay. to see it. Okay. Absolutely. Okay. So everyone keep their eyes and ears peeled <laughs> for, for that when it comes up. By the way, in, a, in case anyone is wondering, um, our, our voice in the sky has told me that it's looking weird that I'm, I, I don't have any aversion to looking at Peter. It's just that I'm in a different setup today. And so I'm having to look this way and it's nothing to do with Peter's beautiful face. Um, mm -hmm. Uh, yeah. So, okay. So, so online, um, and, and what's, what's the time frame for, I mean, I, you know, I know this is a kind of how long's a piece of string type thing, but what's the time frame for the book? Any, any updates on that? Oh, uh, I just hope to be alive to do the book. So that's going to be that would in, help. In the, that's, in the yeah, distant future. Yeah. yeah. No, I mean, it's, you know, um, be considerably harder to get it done from beyond the grave, but, uh, yeah. Um, well, right. I could. Yeah, right. So there's a number of things to do, and um, it's mm. all about the framing of it. So we can talk about this later. But I'm learning sure. slowly that it's not so much about the facts, although those are important. It's about how to mm -hmm. frame the story. So that's the key thing to get right. Yeah, yeah. Uh, unfortunately, that that seems to be a ubiquitous thing where the, the you know style matters more than the substance a lot of the time. Um, oh, the cover of the book, uh, the way mm -hmm. you approach your topic. I mean, there's a lot of choices. And uh, I think story as a general concept is extremely important that that's sure. how we think that's how we identify ourselves. And that's how we you know, yeah. that's our memory. That's how we dream. Everything's in a story that yeah. we can almost break everything down to. So it is pretty fundamental. If you're going to make a reference book and be boring from the very f first page, <laughs> you know, it's you're, not going to work out well for you. Short. It's yeah, not yeah, going to work yeah. out well. So you got to be careful. For, with for anyone listening, Pete, Peter's books are, Pete, Peter's content is far from boring. Um, mm. uh, and yeah, um, Thank you. but you know, please check. Well, yeah, and you've got some, you've got some admirers on this side of the pond as well. Like I've, I've been chatting to some of the, some of the pizza people in London and whenever I've mentioned your name, oh yeah, I love Peter Regas. I love Peter Regas. So you, you have your, uh, your global uh, fan base. Really? Wow. Yeah, we'll have yeah. to talk about that. Okay. Shout, shout out to the bite twice guys. Um, yeah. Um, well, I'm honored. But yeah, and humbled. No. Um, d r rightly so. No, not not rightly so that you're humble, but <laughs> rightly so that you have a, a global fan base. Um, so yeah, I mean, just just because I, I know you said in in the back chat that you 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 didn't know much about Hong Kong and and the kind of pizza scene there. That's not altogether surprising. It's not exactly the first food stuff that comes to mind when you think about Hong Kong. Um, I mean, just to give people who are, pro you know, who are kind of unfamiliar with the scene over there, a little bit of a primer. Um, I, th I mean, the first time I went Hong Kong was around 2014 ish, 2013 ish, I think. Um, and back then there was pizza express, which anyone from the UK will be familiar with anyone who lives in Paris. That's our version of pizza Milano, which is, uh, they do a kind of nondescript American. It's a chain. It's a UK pizza chain. Um, it's inoffensive, but not particularly good. Um, they do a kind of generic American Italian ish type, like 12 inch personal pizza. Um, and I guess over the past decade, they started doing their kind of Romana Tonda, which again is not is not bad, you know, given that I, I take that over a Domino's or a, or a Pizza Hut in a day of the week, but it, it's not, you know, it's not not high high end. Other than that, there were the usual suspects, like I said, Domino's, I think they had a Pizza Hut and their big, uh, like, kind of sexy product offering was this place called Paisano's, which any 
American will kind of wince at the, I don't expect it was, and it was a New York styled slice place, um, kind of naff. Um, and the pizza was, I mean, it was, it was all right. It was like a, a late night party slice. You know, if you want a whole bunch of grease and really heavy cheese and it laden with pepperoni, then that was your move and you'd eat the crap out of it. Um, and there were various outposts of it of, of totally different product quality, like one of the main ones in one of the kind of party districts in, in Hong Kong, like central Hong Kong side was okay. And then another one out towards kind of Repulse Bay, which is like a, a kind of bougie seaside area was not so good. Um, but so fast forward 10 odd years, um, and the pizza scene there is actually doing really, really well. Um, like Motorino, um, who I'm uh, Peter, I'm, I'm guessing you're familiar with. Mm hmm they they've had a spot there for a long time i think they might have been one of the first neapolitan wow. neapolitan ish mm -hmm. places to open up and then they kind of went through the same tidal wave of neapolitans as the uk and and you know france and uh, and even new york and beyond um so there are lots of good neapolitan places um i i recently popped into a new one called fiatta um, which has won lots of awards and, and prizes and, you know, has kind of, you know, got a big hype around it. And it's good. Like I, I went there, I ate there with, um, with my wife and a friend. And I, I mean, it was, it was, I don't want to be overly critical. It was very good, not necessarily remarkable, um, but, you know, in kind of New York would be middle of the road for Neapolitan. Um, but then more interestingly, they've got a Roman place called Pizza Alice or Alice Pizza, which is doing Roman al taglio. Um, I don't know how long that's been around, maybe uh, a, year, a couple of years or something. That is, Everyone calls it Pizza Alice because no one knows that it should be pronounced Alice. But um, if so, if you hear anyone in Hong Kong say, oh, yeah, I really like Pizza Alice, that's, mm. that's the Roman al taglio spot. Um, and it was really good. You know, just a, 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 an honest to God, well executed al taglio, um, some kind of fancier zania toppings, some, you know, bog standard vanilla, yeah, kind of margarita type stuff. Um, and yeah, so it's, it's uh, and like random Roman tonda spots popped up as kind of bar food. And so, it, no, it's, it's, it's quite cool to see how even somewhere that is quite far flung and definitely not a location that you'd associate with uh with being a pizza hub has got a ground surge um of of interesting pizza places open up um i mean there, there is an american italian one called falcone or something like that that opened up i didn't get the opportunity to try that but i think it looked okay um so yeah it, i mean it's it's pretty cool that that um Asia's getting, you know, such a, a good product offering. Um, and obviously, like, Pizza Club had, um, oh, bugger, I'm going to forget her name, something Leopard. Um, uh, she, she lives in Bangkok, and she's a kind of home pizzaiola. Um, it's amazing. Does, you know, fantastic, quote-unquote, neo-Neapolitan. I know we've, we've talked about how that term's potentially triggering to some people. But, um, <laughs> yeah, so, the, you know, it's, it's, it's just pretty cool to see how, how – uh, you know, you, you can pretty much be in any corner of the world now and you can get very, very good uh, pizza. Um, I'm curious, um, from what you said, I gather there were some pan, but I didn't hear an emphasis on pan. I heard mostly Roman and uh, Neapolitan for the new stuff. Yeah, I I, I mean, so I, I, I guess Altaglio would... Mm -hmm. kind of fall under the pan or pan adjacent but um in, in terms of do you, do you mean like grandmasters yeah do you mean like yeah grandmasters sicilian or right exactly i i think i saw one spot i don't know if this was falcone um it may, maybe because of the american angle that was the place that had squares and and you know new york square looking spots um right. and how much of it me. how much has the slice culture sort of gotten in, in road there 
There, okay, so there is, um, like I said, there's that Paisano's place, which, mm -hmm. to be honest, I, I didn't even check if it still exists. I'm assuming just because of first mover advantage and, you know, the foothold it had, it's still there in some capacity. Um, there is a, a kind of hole in the wall, New York ish. No, no, I mean, look, yeah, New York style, not elevated, but, um, New York slice shop, um, in the middle of Wan Chai which is kind of the, the drunk party, um, neighborhood in, in, uh, on Hong Kong side. Um, I ate there once kind of, uh, maybe 2018 and from memory it was okay. You know, it, it wasn't offensively bad, but it would, I, I guess the equivalent of like a dollar slice plate mm -hmm. or a, a dollar 50 slice place. Um, but there, other than that, I don't, I don't think there's much in the way of, an actual slice culture um and that that's kind of the same for london um like i was i was chatting sorry were you can say well i was just saying and then the third thing would be were there any unique toppings there that would be sort of uh organic to the hong kong the culture not not that i saw which is i feel like yeah i feel like they're missing a trick there because I, I remember mm -hmm. chatting with um with a, a very good friend of ours in hong kong she's actually my my kid's godmother um they own a uh, a little craft beer and um snack emporium called the bottle shop um again if anyone in, in hong kong is listening go to saigong and go to the bottle shop um really cute little spot um and they were for a while thinking about opening up a pizza place and we were brainstorming menus and thinking about having like a a pizza with lap chung, like um, Chinese salami rather than regular kind of pepperoni and having that kind of little Asian flourish in it, maybe some chili crisp and things. Um, and it would, yeah, it would be a really cool way to do it. Um, I didn't see anywhere doing that. Um, but then, I, you know, look, I was, I was there for a week. I only ate pizza twice. Um, so I, you know, I, I could, if anyone in the comments is screaming, no, 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 there absolutely was. There's this place is, yeah. Uh, you know, I, I can't comment. Um, so I'm, hopefully there is, which would be really cool. Um, and I, I also think from a, from a slice shop or a kind of slice culture perspective, it would work well, probably better than London, um, which is, I mean, we, we have, we've got one very well received slice place in Covent Garden called Bad Boys Pizza Society. They, they do a great New York slice. Um, other than that, it's hard because you don't really, I don't know, there's not the culture. So people don't know to expect it. And then it, it maybe the footfall doesn't work. Like I was chatting with um, Tom from Vincenzo's up in kind of North London. And he was saying, yeah, it just he doesn't know if it would work here, which is, uh, you know, hopefully it will one day. But um, in, in Hong Kong, because everywhere is, you know, there are these huge monolithic shopping malls everywhere. It kind yeah. of would work to have like a little hole in the mm -hmm. wall spot where someone, you know, stays in the nice air conditioning, grabs a slice, walks around. Um, so, yeah, may, maybe maybe one day and hopefully, uh, you know, like I, I think everyone should have the ability to, you know, do the John Travolta, grab a slice and go walking about and grab a coffee sure. and go walking about. Um, that sounds interesting, but, uh, but it doesn't sound like it's a destination yet for to go to Hong Kong for a pizza. Is that right? No, right? and and... Is that fair? <laughs> Look, I mean, I think that that's absolutely fair. And I, I, if I'm being brutal, I don't think it ever will be because, and you know, I, I'm mindful that this is the pizza club rather than like you know the the yum cha, the dim sum club. But um, Hong Kong is a, a food destination for its own right. food because its right. own food is is sure. freaking amazing. Um, right. But it would it would be cool for it, you know. Like I said, it, it was just very nice this time to see. Oh wow, there's this place and this place is coming up my feet mm -hmm. there's this spot and people making recommendations and they were all you know they're all legit so yeah it's 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 just you know uh, a sign that globally you know the the tide is rising um which is quite cool yeah um, very interesting so yeah you, you i'm guessing you've never oh sorry i just uh, i've just seen a chat function yes feng chen leopard crust pizza based in bangkok uh, I have a friend in Bangkok who was trying to track her down. And apparently she's in, um, I'm going to screw this up, not in Taiwan, maybe Taiwan. I can't remember. She was somewhere doing a pop-up 
Um, but yeah, anyone, anyone on Instagram, go and check out uh, Leopard Crust Pizza. She is a badass. Um, yeah. Uh, but yeah, the the you know the I think the pizza scene in Asia is 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 going strong. I mean, we had we uh, I don't know if you were in for that um, room, Peter, but we had someone with uh, Pizza Spot in Singapore, and it looked amazing and. Yeah, I mean the, the the dream will be to be able to go into any city and get the full range. You know, if you want Chicago deep dish, you get Chicago deep dish. If you want Tamil style, you get Tamil style. You want New York slice, you get New York slice. Um, I don't know if I'll I'll live to see that, but it would be. Well, this is what cool. I always was curious about that I thought may happen or may have the opportunity of happening when all these styles go to lands that are not organic with the particular style. Which one will predominate? Um, and I guess, you know, it's hard to isolate one particular taste because then you can get into, well, who's actually driving it. Is, 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 that, it the, make, the is that the pizza the... version of, of Batman versus Superman? Um, yeah, it's sort of, uh, you know, Darwinian uh, logic yeah. applied to pizza styles. Like mm. that's my sort of, I don't know, if, I wouldn't call it a dream, but I'm sort of curious to see how that's going to play out with the next few decades to see. I mean, clearly things at the pace that they're going now, we can have an expectation that we're not, yeah. I don't think we're in peak pizza yet. I think we've got a ways to go with this. You mean, right? you mean globally? Globally in New York, yeah. definitely here in Chicago, I think still, I think there, there's dramatic room to improve the quality of the pizza and to differentiate the markets. So I think there's a long way to go still. I mean, I, I look. Uh, and that's what, good, what I think. Was, no, I hundred percent, hundred percent. Smile to if if you had to, yeah. If you had to kind of you know pick a winner, would the smart money be on the indigenous scene prevailing? So like in Chicago, the cream of the crop, or the you know the 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 the, the kind of sexy kid in the block is always going to be the Chicago native styles, or do you see some usurping going on? Well, um, that's an excellent question. I don't know um i th th so this is the stuff that kind yeah. of fascinates me of how much yeah. sort of cultural momentum there is to traditions and because we consider this particular style to be chicago how much cachet is that going to have in the future when the next generation is raised on something completely different and is looking on things on the web that are completely not available to when I was their age. So I don't know. I mean, it's really going to be an interesting thing to say. I, I think there's going to be an effect of tradition having a positive effect, but I, you know, I just think things are going to get much more competitive. Um, I think in the last I mean, certainly I'm not the first to say this, but in the last 15 years, there's a new demographic who is going into the business as owners, much more sophisticated. I think the technology is much more that sophisticated kind of too. Wave. Yeah, and yeah. the ability to share information over the web is just dramatically changed who can get into the business. And I think also, I mean, if one thing that still, I'm still struck by about how easy or at least accessible it is to make good pan pizza at home mm. and how that's still not available in the quantities that you would expect in the marketplace, at least here in Chicago is the case. Now, maybe well, some I, I, neighborhoods in New York, it's different, but it's what, still what hard to get great stuff. To get, sorry, I'm confused, to, to make it at home? I, I, yeah. I, I didn't. So the theory is, that if you're a newbie that's finding things on the web and you want to experiment, it would be easy and accessible to do it in a home oven context because the temperature mm. is below 500 degrees. It's, it's simple. Mm. You just have to practice with it. Now, given that is the springboard to go into the business eventually, if you're good and if you have the passion for it, I think there's a supply of owners potentially who would be in that position to do that they don't have to have the oh, oven that goes up to 900 mm. degrees or, you know all that stuff so I, I i have an expectation that's going to come out in the next decade or so but you know who knows yeah well i wonder but it, i mean it like the the only thing that gives me pause for thought on that is that there's and, and this is you know speaking of someone who has geeked out for you know for years and years and and 
obsessed as I have want to do over, uh, you know, making pizza at home. Um, and there's such a huge step between being, you know, being able to make world-class pizza at home in your own mm -hmm. oven, in a nice sure. controlled environment with mm -hmm. everything kind of dialed in and then having the overheads of brick and mortar, having the, the, the agita of having to cater to clients and, like, I, I don't have the balls for that, which is, you know, like as much as I love making pizza and have loved doing kind of pop-ups for friends and, and, and things like that, I, I, I will never have the guts um, or the self-confidence or, you know, whatever. It's you know, a lot kind of, of work. It is huge, a lot of work. Huge, huge, yeah. And a lot um, of risk and, too, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I mean, you know, the the the, the economic risk, the, the stress factor alone, the fact that it, and this is a fascinating thing that I've been chatting to about quite a lot of the London guys. And there's, you know, there's the whole kind of uh, control factor where if it's just you, you know, like you, if you're the key man and you make it a certain way and you know that, you know, this is how the pizza is amazing and you want to continue to give a consistent product to your clients to start to bring help in so you can actually have a life as well. Sure. Or even to think about franchising or, you know you have to let go of the reins and you know like we we all know people in the u.s scene who've just never managed to do that because as soon as they've done it they've seen the quality slide and they're like oh mm -hmm. no i can't do sure. it i want control back i want control back sure. and it, i mean yeah it, it's like i will forever be in awe of the people who who take that dive um yeah that's i mean but to get back to pan one of the intriguing things is that i think it's um can i say more accessible I think, yeah. I, just, I mean, that's, you know, no, so it, it it's, is. It's, it's, it's into a little bit of the stigma that we've talked about before. I think it's like just because it's more accessible and maybe easier to make consistently doesn't mm. mean it can't be equally as often or maybe even better than we think is hard to make and you need special techniques and you need to get training mm. for it and all the rest of it. So that seemingly works to the advantage of pan i'm always a little bit struck as to how it kind of has a little bit of a stigma with the people who i talk to at times um as to being and not sort of at an elite pan no 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 what, because, what's the stigma as in it's somehow oh, inferior to rounds yes 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 it's not ah. quite as good it's not quite as authentic it's some sort of lesser sort of pizza basically it's grandma style and all the rest of that. So it just has a branding about it that it's so is, sort of. Is it, I mean, uh, and this is kind of like, uh, you know, this is ipso facto unavoidable because it, because it's easier and more accessible. Yeah. That's where the snobbery comes in. And I that's think so. Why it's, I yeah. think so. Which, which I look, so. I mean, you and me will agree in this. I, I think that's stupid. Um, well, I mean, it's because... comparing a hamburger to a steak, right? So, or at least, I mean, a steak is not, terribly hard to make, but some sort of more elaborate, uh, the meat dish compared to a hamburger. I mean, you know, yeah, or, you can or, screw or, up I, both, but one's easier exactly. to make, but it's not like I'm going to deny myself a great hamburger at some place. Like, well, so, I mean, and, and it, it, it's a, it's a horses for courses thing. You know, sometimes you want, uh, sure. a, a, you know, a, a steak with, you know, cream spinach. And sometimes you want a badass smash burger. And, right. I mean, like, like I, I did it ass backwards as you guys would say um and shout out to joey raya from grande for telling me i was a a, a self-flagellating dum-dum for doing it this way but when i first started learning to make pizza at home i went straight for the round because that was you know my mm -hmm. that was my preferred way of eating pizza right. and you know i don't get me wrong i had nothing but love for, for grandmas that sounds so wrong nothing but love for, for grandmas and sicilians um, and Sicilian grandmas. Um, but I, I just, my, you know, my go-to, I wanted a uh, kind of New York slice type thing. So I, you know, slaved away and making rounds, making rounds, making rounds. And now I'm much more confident making rounds than I am making squares. But I also recognize, like to, to people I've taught to make pizza, I will always say, just start with pan. Why? Because you can adjust on the fly. It's much more forgiving when it comes to, you know, ladening it with toppings. It, it's, it's maybe I think it's maybe harder to get an excellent slice with you know like if you want a really bready open crumb or that kind of dense spongy micro crumb or you know to make sure there's no gum line. I think those things at that higher kind of uh, level of execution are harder with squares, but 
straight off the bat to get a very good, tasty, yummy, mm -hmm. juicy pizza, so much easier with pans. Right. And the hidden thing about pan style is that at least I think so, that it has the added advantage of if you have leftovers, they take a reheat, I think, better than the thinner styles. I, I think so, they're even better. Yeah. Yeah. yeah right. Can, well, yeah, free, arguably, it's better yeah. the second day as opposed to when you actually make it, which is, you know, crazy. But yep. I think it's true. Yeah. Well, it's it's the it's kind of analogous to, la, to the lasagna thing or like, you know, like a pasta bake. Um, once you let it sit there and, you mm -hmm. know, everything kind of melds and, you mm -hmm. know, um, but yeah, I mean, I, I, uh, making me hungry now. I, <laughs> yeah. I might, I might go and do a 24 hour dough after this. Um, <laughs> but no, I mean like the, the, and I, I think this, you know, this kind of speaks to your point in the London scene, the, the squares have been slow to come, but are starting to come now. Um, you know, we, we had, it we was, we got a great Detroit scene, which is obviously purely square, but the, the places that do new york style um tend to do squares as just a special um but slowly but surely the, the reception for them has been amazing rightly so um and i you know they 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 lend themselves to more elaborate toppings um so that helps um but yeah, I mean, it's, you know, it's uh, hopefully a, a kind of area or a, a product type that we will see increasingly um, go from Maybe that could be a future show, elaborate toppings, yay or nay? <laughs> I, yes. I say nay. <laughs> I say nay. Uh, no, I, well, you know me. I, I'm, I'm boring as sin. I, I'm a kind of margarita oh, guy, you know, old school. But recently, again, shout out to Jerry from Bite Twice, took me to Breadstall Pizza in Clapham. Um, shout out to Breadstall. Um, and made me try their Bolognese pizza, which oh, wow. is nothing I would normally try because it was, you know, just so much toppings. I was like, uh, but it was fantastic. Was it on a I pan? I mean, it was, it um, was a meal pizza. in a slice. Right. Yeah, it was like a proper ragu on top, you know, like a meat sauce on top of a regular, I think it was basically like a margarita or, you know, like a cheese slice with bolognese sauce on top. Wow. Um, and it was, rich. I mean, it was a hefty, but yeah, tasty as hell. Um, it would, you know, it would never be my, um, my go-to, but go -to, as a culinary sure. experience, phenomenal. Um, and, wow. and Tom from Vincenzo's who just did a, a super, super, um, uh, kind of hype, uh, well-received uh, collaboration with Forno, which is a, an Italian bakery in East London. Uh, he did, in addition to, I mean, you'll like this, he did a clam pizza, um, but also a lasagna pizza. And so, yeah, I mean, I, I you know, these uh, adventurous toppings. There's a place awesome. for them. Exactly, exactly. There's a place for them. I mean, like I said, Once I'm every a few months, maybe. git, um, so mm -hmm. I will always be basil, tomato, mozzarella but yeah every once in a while there's a fancy schmancy slice absolutely but no gold leaf or anything like that no right? that because that cross I, I i know you're joking but like right. that crosses the line from Schmaltz. experimental to pretentious bollocks um and yeah i have no truck with that kind of stuff i mean yeah, fine you know the instagram has created a world where everything is just about super fine but yeah exactly exactly well, on that um, we total agreement and uh, mm -hmm. and uh, onward I mean, and upward. Hopefully, we won't get flamed too badly for for uh, look. Like I said, everyone's you know each to each their own. I'm a boring git, I, you know, and uh, <laughs> uh, forever will I be. But uh, yeah, um, are we? How are we doing for time? I think uh, we're there, Tom. I think we're there. Um, am I? Am I doing the? Yeah, I probably need to do the 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 kind of. Oh, crap where's the thing i can't find it um anyway so yeah this has been pizza club uh pizza cultura um i can't find my notes but don't worry about it um if you want to follow us uh we are on instagram under the handle i need pizza club uh, also on tiktok under the, the same handle um and yeah if you like this uh go ahead give it a thumbs up and subscribe and that'll help us to create more of this stuff and give us a bit of feedback and yeah um thank you peter it's been a pleasure buddy um good it's luck with good, to see uh, you, good luck with all the book stuff keep us Thanks. posted 
Let us know as soon as the article pops online. Oh my gosh. Um, Sure. Yeah. And uh, have a, have a great weekend, buddy. Take care. You too. Bye-bye. Bye.